Motor Week is made possible by rockauto.com. Among Japanese car makers, Mazda is fairly healthy, but they're not as big as Nissan or Toyota. Well, bet you can't name all the cars in Toyota's U.S. lineup, but you probably can for Mazda, and then count all the models on one hand. Well, Mazda would like to fill out their lineup to be more competitive with other car makers. To that end, Mazda has introduced a new sport coupe. It's based on the newly redesigned 626, and it's called the MX-6. So just what does this newcomer have? What it has is some of the best looking sheet metal in the Mazda lineup. Unlike its plainer 626 brethren, the MX-6 GT is the most European looking car that Mazda has ever made. A strong German influence is evident throughout the car's design. It's especially obvious in the sleek front end with its compact lights and sloping hood and blister fenders add to the European sport look. The GT's tail features a prominent spoiler that blends well with the MX-6's lines. It's Mazda's attempt to build a luxury sport coupe that will appeal to European car fans. Unfortunately, the upgraded exterior doesn't carry over to the interior. It looks similar to the 626's. While we like this series of nicely flowing shapes, the Dash's semi-gloss molded plastic doesn't say upmarket sports coupe. Since the outside of the MX-6 is so different from the 626, the interior should be too. Positive interior points include a high level of standard features that European competitors can't match at a reasonable price. Gauges are large and clear, but as in most German cars, there is no oil pressure or voltmeter. Digital gauges are, thankfully, just an option. We also weren't crazy about the upholstery fabrics but at least Mazda made the seats feel like something special. The standard seven-way adjustable driver's seat is comfortable with generous side and bottom bolsters. We especially like the adjustments for height and lower back support. A tilt wheel is also standard and offers a wide range of adjustments. Unlike the 626, the MX-6 does not yet have a passive restraint system. There are dash-mounted switches to control the auto-adjusting suspension. This is standard with the GT and optional on LX-grade cars. A cassette stereo is standard, but it's set too low in the dash, and many of its controls are too small. Above it sits the climate controls, which are comprehensive and well laid out. Rear seat room is a bit tight, as in most coupes, but there's more room here than in competitors such as the Honda Prelude. Plus, a split folding rear seat allows access to the trunk, and it is lockable. The trunk itself is very spacious, with a low liftover, but the opening is a bit tight for larger bags. All MX-6s get their power from a 2.2-liter four-cylinder engine. The GT adds a turbo and intercooler to boost output to a healthy 145 horsepower and 190 pound-feet of torque. There's more noise and vibration here, though, than in four-cylinder engines from other Japanese car makers, and fluid reservoirs here are poorly marked. We clocked zero to 60 times of 7.6 seconds and finished the quarter mile in 16 seconds at 89 miles per hour. Yes, the numbers are good, but we didn't like our MX-6's optional automatic transmission. The first to second shift in our car was very lazy and not in keeping with the engine's performance. We prefer the standard five-speed manual. Also, the turbo seemed to produce all of its power in one great rush. And when that turbo kicks in, the MX-6 has more torque steer than most other high-performance front-drive cars we've tried. In our handling test, the MX-6 proved to be very well-mannered, with no nasty surprises. Front-end plow is minimal, and when the tail finally does cut loose, it does so gently and with plenty of warning. We achieved our best handling with the suspension set in either normal or sport modes. The soft setting lacks feel and produces too much body roll. The power steering is firm with plenty of road feel. For stopping, the MX-6 GT gets four-wheel disc brakes. These brought our test car down from 55 in a very short average distance of 98 feet. Control was easy with minimal lockup and no fade, even as the brakes heated up. If even that's not good enough for you, anti-lock brakes are available as an option. EPA mileage ratings for the MX-6 GT with automatic transmission are 19 city, 25 highway. Our mixed test loop returned a very respectable 25 miles per gallon. 
Interior sound levels were also quite quiet at 67 decibels. In price, the GT starts at $14,499. With its few options, our test car comes to $16,014. And if you have a hang-up about buying an import, take note that Mazda will eventually build most of its US MX-6 models at its new plant in Flat Rock, Michigan. The same plant that will build Ford's new sporty coupe, the Pro. But as for current competition, the Honda Prelude cost about the same and offers similar performance, but loses out on interior and luggage space. The BMW 325 is substantially more expensive, but offers superior handling and much more prestige. In our safety check, the MX-6 GT passes with rear shoulder belts, 5 mile per hour bumpers, radial tires, and available anti-lock brakes. It lacks only front passive restraints. Our list of hits starts with the MX-6 GT's wealth of standard features. That's followed by the handsome styling, fine performance, and excellent seats. Misses include the 626 look-alike interior trim. All our other complaints are with the drivetrain. The automatic transmission is slushy. The turbo boost comes on unevenly. There's too much engine noise and too much front drive torque steer. So while the Mazda MX-6 GT is no German GT, it does show the continuing Japanese advance into European sport coupe territory. Mazda hasn't yet discovered the secret of German engineering, but with efforts like the MX-6, they get closer all the time.